All right, so today I am gonna do an unboxing and assembly of my quarantine rack for my ball pythons. I'm actually getting a snake, a brand new snake in a couple days, and it's been a while since I brought a snake in here, and I've never actually really had an area where I could properly quarantine these animals, and this is really gonna be my first quarantine area. So what I bought was an ARS 7010, and you know, the 7010s are ideal because in order to add another level, it only costs like $100, for another level you get the tub and the heat strip and the whole frame and everything and what I actually bought is two levels plus the base unit so the base unit actually is has the wheels on it and it rolls around on the base unit and it's essentially almost the same price as another level just getting the base unit so I was thinking maybe getting a base unit in just one level and I thought hey for another hundred bucks I could throw in two levels if I wanted to buy two snakes at a time and I'm thinking of maybe quarantining for maybe three weeks, three or four weeks, just to make sure these snakes don't have any mites. And the other reason I went to a bigger tub is I can, I can quarantine anything from a hatchling to an adult ball python in an ARS 70 tub versus if I got something a little bit smaller, I may be limited and I couldn't really, couldn't really quarantine a large adult snake. So it's, it's just a temporary holding place for the ball python. I figured a bigger tub was a little bit better than getting something a little bit smaller. So I want to show you that box. First thing I'm going to do is I want to bring it in here and throw it on my scale and we're going to get a weight on that box. That thing, I could hardly lift it. You wouldn't think it would be that heavy, just two levels and a base, you know, the base unit with the casters on it. But let me tell you, that thing is a beast. So let's bring it in, take a weight and unbox it. All right, so this thing is a beast. I could barely bring it in and put it on the table. I actually had to wear my back brace. This thing weighs 62.9 pounds. That is pretty heavy for just a couple of levels of a rack. All right, so I am gonna unbox this thing, and the funny thing is, is every time ARS sends something, they always use tape and staples. So you really have to be careful not to get cut from these staples. So what I usually do is I just kind of cut the tape a little bit, and then just pull it apart. Wow, <laughs> look at this, that is pretty incredible. Whew. And of course they always use uh, uh, like this recycled popcorn material. It's kind of interesting, it looks like, it looks like it's re-shredded, repurposed styrofoam, which is kind of interesting. And, oh! These definitely have to be the casters here. These are really heavy. Those are super heavy duty. Comes with the heat panels, two heat panels. It's interesting that they're not really in a bag. They're just kind of thrown in with the, the popcorn. Has some assembly instructions. We may actually need those at some point. <laughs> Look at this. This is probably, I'm guessing, the tubs here. Oh, it sounds like there's a bunch of stuff in there. And let's see, on the bottom here, we have a lot of metal pieces. So what I'm going to do is, uh, it looks like... Looks like all the rest is just metal in here. So what I'm gonna do is unbox this all and lay it out on the table. All right, so this is what was in the box. All these little metal pieces here, which is kind of interesting. I hope I have all the pieces. <laughs> the one thing that I really found interesting is that on some of these, it has styrofoam like stuck in there. I can't seem to get it out. I suppose you could put a rod through there and get it out. I just thought it was interesting they threw all this in with the styrofoam because it seems like almost all of them have styrofoam like stuck. I don't know if you can see that. I was trying to get it out. Not that it really matters. You can leave the styrofoam in. I thought that was pretty interesting. So I'm gonna open these casters first and take a look at these. 
All right, so I have to say these are really well packed. These are pretty incredible, and these are really high quality casters. Take a look at those. Those are super heavy duty. So what I want to do from here is just kind of set these aside. And then I want to dig into that and see what's in that big old box. All right, so I just cut the bubble wrap away a little bit. And this is what is in here. These are the tops. So in the regular ARS, the ones that aren't hybrid, this is actually built in and it's made of metal. These are pretty cool because it makes the whole unit quite a bit lighter. And looks like we have a bunch of plastic pieces here. Here, <laughs> here, and here, and <laughs> then we have all the hardware right here. Check that out. We have a whole bunch of screws right here, and corners. Yeah, tons and tons and tons of these little snap together hardware pieces. So, what I'm going to do next is grab some tools and read the directions. <laughs> Alright, so if you get an ARS Hybrid Series Rack, I hope you like puzzles because this is kind of a puzzle putting it together. So really what you need is you need uh, a rubber mallet. I have one here. Uh, you actually need a drill. I have a drill with a, a Phillips head screw bit. And I have a socket set here with a whole bunch of sockets. I don't have a crescent wrench with me. We'll see if I can get by without one. I'm not sure if I actually needed one the last time I did it, but we'll try it anyway. So essentially what you do is you look for the thing that says base this way and base this way. So there's a long way and a narrow way. This is supposed to say base right there. <laughs> so what you do is you put these together, you put these in the middle and you pound it together with this to make the base frame. And that's what I'm gonna to do to start. So I wanted to show you the first one here. Uh, you really have to make sure that the holes, the holes are kind of angled. They're, they're more on one side, so you have to make sure that they are facing out. You have to make sure you get the one with the three instead of the four. And make sure these are on top, facing out. Make sure it's all aligned properly. And then you put the end on. And to put the end on, you gotta hit it with the mallet and it seems like when you first put it together it doesn't seem like it'd be that sturdy until you get it all together let me tell you these are super sturdy once you get them all together it is pretty intense so let me hammer the rest of these together and we'll move on all right so here is the base unit put together and it has these little corner units right here these are really heavy duty i'd say this probably weighs almost half a pound, maybe a pound. This is a really serious piece of steel. And the way you put these on is put them right here on each corner. And these are what the wheels attach to. So the casters attach just like this. So, but before we put the casters on, we actually have to go through and use the Phillips head screws and screw these in. There's three on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and screw all those together. All right, so I finished putting on all four corners and then the next step is to use these bolts here and put on the casters. So the casters fit on right here. A nut comes up from the bottom, or actually the bolt comes up from the bottom and then it has a nylon washer that goes on the top. This actually fits into a size 13 socket. All right, so there is the completed bottom, and let me tell you, it is pretty heavy duty. It is pretty heavy. I'd say this probably weighs, I don't know, 10 or 15 pounds, something like that. So the next thing you do is start to assemble the side. So you take the side piece here, and you put the, the it's kind of the, the where the tub slides in right here, and then the top slides in right along here. It just has two holes right along the side. Then you just put two screws right in here. All right, so I have run into a snag already. So according to the packing list here, there's supposed to be level sidebars for right here. And I only have two. And I looked through everything. As a matter of fact, I have two more slides here but I don't have 
I only have two bars, so it looks like it looks like we're only going to assemble one level. It's a good thing I got two levels because uh, at least we can assemble one. I'm going to have to get some more parts. I'm essentially missing these metal poles, two of these metal rod, these bars right here. And that is the size for the level. So I guess today what we're going to do is just assemble one level at a time. Okay, so on this there's actually a front and a back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble uh, the front and the back bars. So if you look at this, this one actually has, you can see there's <laughs> still some styrofoam falling out of here. There's actually holes on this side and there's holes on this side. So according to the instructions, it looks like um, the front level includes holes on one side only. So if it has holes on both sides, that is the back. At this point, it doesn't really matter because you can flip it either way, back and front, but as long as you have all the levels. And see, this one doesn't have any holes on this side. This is the front. So essentially what you want to do here, this goes on the front so you don't see any holes on the front of the rack. And then you put this bracket right here and use three screws to put the bracket on the front. Okay, so this is what the front looks like assembled. It's flush with the top and it has the lip here. And the back is a little bit more confusing. So you actually, let's see, you put brackets on both sides of the back. So on this side, you actually put them like this. So it's kind of flush with the top, and this is kind of the inside. The other uh, part screws in here, the, the slide screw in here, and this is actually the back of the whole rack, and on this side it actually hangs down a little bit, and this is what actually stops the tub from sliding out of the back of the rack. It hangs down just a little bit, just like that. All right, so here is what the back looks like. This is the very back of the rack where the tubs will actually stop against this, and then this is the inside of the back of the rack. So from here what you want to do is you want to put it together with these little connectors and basically they just kind of snap around and you can use a rubber mallet. It doesn't really take much effort to get them in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to snap all of these together. Alright so there you have it. So when you get to this point you're pretty fortunate if you don't have to backtrack and start taking stuff apart because you can easily put it together backwards or upside down. So this is essentially how it's supposed to look. You have this little lip right here in the back. This is the very back bottom part of this, the tub. The tub slides, slides right down in here. So actually you have the slide, the tub slides right down in here. And what, what to do next is you flip this part over. Let's see if I can... <laughs> Let's think. Let's see if I can get it to where it's not sliding around. You slip this part over, and then you put uh, bars in each one of these, and then this goes right on top of there. And you essentially use these little tiny short bars, and you just pound them right on. All right. So I did forget one thing before we actually put this on the other level. There are little screw holes right in here in the corners. And these are a little bit tricky to get to with the elect electronic, uh, the electric screwdriver because it doesn't fit in there real good. But you definitely want to put those four screws in before you move ahead. All right, so this is the assembled unit for what we're going to assemble today. Normally on the top, these are flat. We're going to actually put one more level on here, but we don't have the side arms. So I'm going to have to order that. So we'll just basically just do this one level for now. And the next thing you do is you put this in the top and when I first installed this on my other racks you see there's a smooth side and then there's a side with these little notches here you really want these notches up on top like this because what happens is if you put it upside down essentially what happens is the snake can hurt itself rubbing against that versus if it's rubbing against the top of the tub on this side it doesn't hurt itself at all and then you want the holes up on the front you don't really want the holes in the back because uh, you'll get too much evaporation with the heat and the holes and you'll lose the humidity really quick. So essentially how this fits in here, <laughs> it's pretty easy. This just should slide right in here, right in the top, just like this, just like that. And you can see these little tabs here kind of hold it so you, the snake can't push 
up on it. I was wondering, hey, <laughs> we start putting it together, you're like, what is this little tab for? And that's to hold the top on. All right, so the next thing you do is actually put these Velcro strips right in the back on the bottom level. So essentially what this is, is this is the heat strip. And I find it interesting they put this kind of a layer. And it used to be where you can actually see the heat tape in there. <laughs> and now they covered it with a little bit of insulation, which I really like. It looks a lot more professional than just flipping it over and seeing the, the heat tape under there glued on. So essentially what you do is you take these and you put them, you glue them to, let's see, they then actually go over here. And essentially how it is, is, is it sits just like this, except it's gonna sit on the level right below this. You'll have one on this level too. Uh, so what you do is you put the Velcro right on here and right on here. So actually I could, I could set this one up too. So you just take this off and put it, I guess, you can put it right on the edge here just like that and just like this and this goes right of course we don't have a tub on this level yet so it doesn't really matter but that holds the heat strip right on there and and put the velcro on just like that so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put the uh, i got two more velcros i want to put them on the level right below right, so i put the velcro under there and i'm just going to slip the seat mat right under here and essentially what you do is you plug these into a into a heat strip and then you control it with a thermostat so when you buy one of these the thermostat doesn't come with it you have to actually buy one and I actually have one on my hat sling rack that I'll use for this temporarily. All right, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put this tub in here. This is super, these, these casters are super slippery. It is pretty crazy. I'm gonna take this tub and I'm gonna slide it right in here. It's kind of hard to do on the table. It almost, it would almost been better to do it on the floor, but this is, this keeps me from having to bend over. So this is, this is pretty much it. This is the setup right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna contact ARS, see if I can get a couple bars for the second level, and we'll put that one together. But in the meantime, I have one level for my hatchling. Uh, it's actually, I think they weighed it, it was like a little over 200 grams, and it should be fine in here. I'm probably gonna keep it on paper towel for, maybe two or three weeks until I know for sure it doesn't have mites or respiratory infection or anything like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this probably uh, upstairs, probably, probably in the spare bedroom up there. It is two flights of stairs up away from the snake room. You definitely wanna keep this away from all these snakes, especially you know since we're using it as a quarantine. So another thing they gave me is this little ARS caging decal. It's kind of a raised kind of a plastic. And probably what I'll do is I'll stick it on the top level once we finish it. And I just kind of want to give you kind of a side view of what this looks like. This rolls really nice. There's the back. There's the heat panel in the back. This is how it's supposed to look. So the, the, the tub fits right on the heat panel. This should be about 90 degrees. And this is a really nice, this is pretty much the best of the best. This is what all my stuff in this room is. This is all ARS caging. Look at how easy it rolls, super easy. Really nice rack. This is what the top looks like. And this is what the top will look like once we put it all together, except it won't have these, it'll be flat up on top. And what I really like about this is I might actually be able to stick it <laughs> down here somewhere once I actually, you know, if I, if I decide to keep building on this, like I can buy like each level for like $100. So maybe for a couple more $100, I could get a couple more levels, eventually get the full stack of 10. I'm not sure if 10 would fit in here. So I'm pretty limited with space. I think it's like eight or nine to, <laughs> I'm getting close to the ceiling, but I can actually build this up and use it down here in my reptile room. You know, if I keep getting a few more hatchlings or big snakes, put them up here and then, you know, move them up into my racks and kind of use this to add to my 
whole setup down here. It's, it's pretty awesome. And these, you know, one, one guy actually said he bought one of these and he kind of regretted it. He wished he would have got a bigger one. And let me tell you, this is perfect for a quarantine, especially if you get a little bit bigger. If I move out into another building, I could use this as my quarantine, maybe get 10 snakes at a time and then quarantine them and then use the rest as, you know, for my, for my grouts and my breeding operations. All right, so that is how you put together an ARS 7010 hybrid, just one level. And unfortunately, we didn't have all the pieces for the second level. But let me tell you, this was pretty easy compared to like when I did my ARS 1039 with 39 tubs. That was the first one I put together. And then I did my ARS 1065 with 65 tubs. Let me tell you, that took most of the most of a part of a day, I would say, to put that thing together. And this one probably only took maybe about an hour, I'd say a little bit more if we would have had the second level to put it all together. It's really not that bad. And I'm not really sponsored by ARS. I don't have an affiliate program with them. So I'm not really pushing their product, but it's a really awesome product. I pretty much filled my room. It's pretty much the best of the best. One thing I'd caution you on the ARS products is they're not made of stainless steel. I know there's a lot of uh, manufacturers out there that kind of brag about their stainless steel racks. One thing, you really want to be careful on these is the inside of the tubes are not uh, treated metal so it's not painted on the inside and you definitely don't want to take your racks outside and spray them down with water because what will happen is the water will sit inside those tubes and it'll essentially rust from the inside out so what you really need to do is either blow them off with the compressed air or go through with a rag I usually just do a rag like a rag with disinfectant and wipe down the outside of the whole thing and that's you know pretty much the best way to, to, to treat a rack you definitely don't want to get these wet that is not good for a steel rack but let me tell you these are really nice racks and I would recommend if you're getting a snake even just one snake or two snakes these are really nice because if you get the ARS 7010 you can put a ball python in there and it can pretty much live its whole life in that size of a tub so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time